This next topic um, is probably um, one of the most difficult things for students to learn in algebra class, and that is how to solve quadratic equations completing the square. And um, I think one of the reasons that it's so difficult is that it relies on previous knowledge, and it also is a, a very uh, detailed process of how to do it. Um, but first, I want to show you why we would need a new technique to even uh, solve something like this. So this is certainly a leading coefficient of one problem. So I need to find the factors of 7, uh, which would add to 10. Well, what are the factors of 7? You have 7 and 1, and that adds to 8, so that's not it. And I can't think of it. I don't think there is factors of 7, which would add to 10. So we can't, we can't solve it from in our uh, current techniques. So we need a new technique, and that is this completing the square. Um, and that's how do you solve quadratic equations where you can't just factor them. Okay, now completing the square, I, I, um, I wrote this out. This is a perfect square trinomial here. You have x squared plus 2ab plus c squared. Uh, and then that would be a plus b times a plus b, or you can write it as a plus b quantity squared, right? Um, an example of that might be x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square of x plus 2 squared, okay? So that's the previous knowledge we need to know, is what is a perfect square, okay? So I'm going to take that away because it's not actually... Uh, that's just an example of what a perfect square is. Now, to solve this, I need to make... A perfect square so I'm going to make a perfect square okay out of thin air I'm gonna make one now how am I gonna do that well I'm gonna take the 10 so I'm gonna take x squared 10 X and I need to think of what number so a plus 7 and I have to add it to both sides so I'm going to have to add this number to both sides. But what would be the perfect square number here? We had one homework question that did this. And the number that's going to work is 10 divided by 2, which I know is 5, but I'm going to write 10 divided by 2 squared. That would make this trinomial a perfect square. Again, this number is just 25. 10 divided by 2 squared is 25. But I want to show you that process. I took the middle term, I cut it in half, I squared it. And so that also needs to go here. 10 divided by 2 squared. Now that's just 25, but I want to show you what that process is. And I think you can see it better this way than if I write 25. Okay, now I claim that this is a perfect square. So what square is that? Well, that's x plus 5 squared, right? 10 divided by 2 is 5. This is x plus 5 squared, 7. And then we already talked about 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25, so I can write 25 there. Okay, well, you might say to yourself that I don't see how that helps you in any way, right? Because now you still have a problem to solve, but look at it this way. I can subtract 7 on both sides here, so I get x plus 5 squared. If I subtract 7 on both sides, I get 18, okay? Again, you might say to yourself, well, I don't see how that saved you anything. But just like in the previous video, I can now take the square root of both sides, and when I do that, I'm going to start uh, being able to actually solve for this x. So again, this is going to be plus or minus root 18, Okay, and we can write 18 as 2 times 9 and start um, reducing that. But uh, that is so far what we can do. Now we actually have x plus 5 equals plus or minus root 18. I'm going to leave it 18, root 18 for now. Um, but we're getting close because now we can just subtract 5 to both sides. x equals negative 5 plus or minus root 18. 18 okay and that's it that's that's the answer we've solved for x no wonder why we couldn't um uh we couldn't just guess what it was right because i mean this is um yeah we weren't going to just be able to guess uh that it was <laughs> negative 5 minus root 18 now if you want you can actually simplify 
this a little bit using um, our square root properties, the product rule actually, plus or minus, and then that is 9 times 2, and I can take the 2 out. So this is negative 5 plus or minus 3 root 2. And that is our two answers there. So the two answers are x equals negative 5 minus 3 root 2, x equals negative 5 plus 3 root 2. Okay. Now, if you're trying to type something into web work, again, you're going to have to write sqrt2. So you could write 3 square root 2. Okay. Now, that is, that's pretty confusing of what we just did there. So I'm going to go over the same question again. What did I do? I identified that this problem can't be factored, or I can't factor it using uh, my uh, techniques that I've learned so far. So I had to come up with a new way, and I'm going to use that the way of completing the square. So I made a perfect square out of these two terms here. So I had to make a perfect square. I did that by 10 divided by 2, quantity squared. That would make this trinomial a perfect square. I have to add it to both sides. Otherwise, I'm just making stuff up you know, wholesale there. So I have to um, kind of cover my bases there. So by doing that, I made a perfect square, x plus 5 squared. Now it equals 25 because I had to add 25 to both sides. And I still have that 7 from the problem. Now I was able to move 7 on both sides, and I was able to use previous techniques that we learned in the previous videos um, to be able to start solving it. But this is completing the square. It's a very involved process, um, and I hope that um, through this um, practice and this video that it will make sense. Okay, the next one um, is 2x squared minus 7x plus 4 equals 0. Now, I don't think I'm going to have enough time in this video to solve it, but um, we are going to have to divide by 2 because we're going to need this to be a leading coefficient of one problem. And I want to notice that um, that is what we had before, so we didn't have to do that step. Okay, So I didn't even bring it up because I didn't want to bring up more than we needed to tackle. But the first thing to do is to get that to be a leading coefficient of 1. Okay, um, maybe I should even uh, say that we can't use AC method either because that would be 2 um, times 8. I'm sorry, that would be 2 times 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. And now you need to find the factors of 8, which add to 7. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Because um, you can have 1 and 8, but you need to multiply to positive 8 and you needed to add to negative 7. You know, if it was negative 8 you could work, but that's not going to multiply to negative 8. So yeah, so we're going to have to use completing the square. And I'm going to do that in the next video. So I will see you in the next video.